It was only six months after Team Fortress 2 came out that it got its first unlockable weapons, and the fact that two-thirds of them were essentially just direct upgrades on release already tells you that TF2's relationship with unlocks has always been at least a little bit rocky. But at the same time, balancing was always meant to be an ongoing process. We had things like the original Natasha that slowed people down to a crawl all the way from across the map, the original Panic Attack, which was an emergency weapon that you always needed to load first during combat, and of course, there's things like the original Sandman that completely immobilized anybody hit by the ball and stunned Uber players as a feature, which is still one of the most bafflingly terrible ideas ever put into the game. But all of those weapons have since been changed, so as some more contemporary examples, the Wrangler's shield is and always has been excessively powerful, as are the Vaccinator shields which charge super fast, and then on the other hand you have weapons like the Gas Passer which takes forever to charge for a mediocre effect that any flare gun does better. And really, you could fill in the blank here with any questionably balanced weapon. But you know what? I think all of those weapons are salvageable. Some of them might need big changes, but they can or they have been fixed. The Wrangler is conceptually a completely fine weapon, the only problem is just how stupidly powerful the shield is. And while the original Sandman was easily the most broken weapon ever put into the game, the basic concept of a scout melee that launches a ball is cool, you could totally work with that. But there's one weapon that I think is so flawed conceptually that it is really truly unsalvageable. One weapon that I will go on record as saying is my least favorite weapon currently in the game. The Razorback. Yeah, the Razorback. It's the only weapon in all of TF2 that I will outright refuse to use. On principle. Now hold up, I'm not some salty spy main or anything, the footage of this video will make that pretty clear. In fact, both Sniper and Spy are in my three least played classes. There is nothing about my distaste for the Razorback that comes from a class preference bias. And let me get this out of the way too. Just because I refuse to use the Razorback doesn't mean I have anything against people using it. If it exists in the game, it could be used. If you want to play Phlogistonator Pyro with two pocket vaccinator medics on a team with three wrangled sentries, you might be a sociopath, but as far as I'm concerned, that's fair game. We all have weapons we dislike, but whining about or bullying people just for using a weapon is always going to be more obnoxious than the weapon itself. That said, it still doesn't mean we can't complain about that weapon in general. I mean, the Razorback barely even counts as a weapon. And I can't really say that it's overpowered, or that it's underpowered. The best thing I could say about it is that it adequately serves the purpose that it was intended to. But I don't think that the role that the Razorback fills is a role that ever should have existed. The Razorback's sole purpose is to block backstabs. It has an effect that only works against one out of the nine classes. So that would make it worthless, right? Well, no, that one class that it does counter is also meant to counter Sniper himself. But the second the enemy team stops having a spy, then yes, it becomes absolutely worthless and is a detriment in every way to have it equipped. Not only does it prevent you from being overhealed as a downside, but you're also giving up any other secondary. The SMG is a slightly underrated but very reliable weapon, Jurati is super powerful, the Cozy Camper provides a lot of utility, the Darwin's Danger Shield is... uh... stupid. It's almost as bad as the Razorback, but we'll get to that later. But you know what I think might be the worst thing about the Razorback? Aside from that it exists? It involves absolutely no input from the sniper himself. You don't actually do anything with it. You slap it on your back, and as long as it's there, you can't be backstabbed. I, I mean, sure, you can be backstabbed if it's broken, but the only way it breaks is by being backstabbed. And stabbing the Razorback shocks the spy so he can't switch weapons for two seconds, so no spy is ever going to purposely backstab the Razorback. If it happens, it's probably by accident. The Razorback is entirely a preventative weapon that forces spies to completely play around it, while, again, the sniper doesn't have to do anything. An unfortunately large number of weapons in TF2, especially from early on, do exist either with a main purpose to counter spy, or do that as an extra feature. Jurati, Mad Milk, the Tribalman Shiv, the Pompson, the Southern Hospitality, the Homewrecker, the Neon Annihilator, but at least all those weapons actually require you to do something, and they have other purposes. The Razorback just doesn't. It does one thing, and it does that simply by existing on your character. But now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's just take a quick look at the balance history of the Razorback. It's literally only been changed twice, so this won't take too long. When the Razorback was released, it blocked a single backstab attempt and had a minus 15% movement speed penalty on it. And this penalty was alluded to on the update page, but as far as I know, it was always a hidden stat. So yeah, it made Sniper the third slowest class in the game just for having it equipped. But that downside was very quickly removed only about a month after the Razorback came out. Much later in Jungle Inferno, it was finally given a recharge and it was given a minus 100% overheal penalty. And, uh, for what it's worth, I do think these changes were good. It's like putting an air freshener and some new hubcaps on your completely totaled car. I, I guess it makes it slightly better. Sentry down! 
The original movement penalty was just unnecessary and hindered your ability to escape against the other eight classes. And prior to Jungle Inferno, the Razorback was the only purely one-time use item in the game. You do also have the Ulpul Caber, but that still kind of functions as a melee weapon after it explodes. The only way to restore the old Razorback after it was broken was to either go to resupply or to die. So I do think the recharge was overall a good thing. It does kind of just awkwardly pop back into existence when it refills, but uh, I guess that's fine. And uh, Jungle Inferno also added the overheal penalty, which was primarily added for competitive play, but I do think it was a good change for casual as well. A Razorback Sniper with a Medic is no longer able to counter both Spies and Snipers, which I think is pretty fair. But like I said, these are really just Band-Aid fixes. So I don't really want to talk too much about the balance of Sniper as a whole. It's a topic that's done to death, but to get this out of the way, Sniper is arguably overpowered, and Spy is also arguably underpowered. But whether or not you agree with those sentiments, it only plays a very small part in why the Razorback is such a conceptually terrible idea. So, in the game, how are you actually supposed to fight the Razorback? Well, if you're Scout, Soldier, Pyro, Doman, Heavy, Medic, or Sniper, nothing changes at all. But if you're Spy, then it shakes things up a lot. A Sniper that otherwise could have been an easy stab now has to be played around. And you might be in the camp that says, just shoot him. It only takes two or three hits depending on your revolver. And there was a point in time when I used to be in that camp too. I thought the Razorback was borderline worthless because spies could just shoot the sniper. But there's two things there. For one, if a weapon that purely exists to counter spy couldn't properly counter spy, then that's yet another reason as to why the Razorback is a horrible concept. But two, shooting a sniper with a revolver is often easier said than done. Sure, of course, if the sniper is alone, you could pick him off pretty easily. Situations like that will always exist. But this is Team Fortress 2, not All By Myself Fortress 2. Team is right there in the title, in case you missed it. If that sniper has the Razorback and proper team support, he can become almost impossible to backstab. Shooting is always going to be slower, and it's always going to put you in a more vulnerable state than backstabbing someone. Any time you take to do that is time you could be spotted by one of the sniper's teammates, or even the sniper himself. There's also plenty of situations where you could easily have gotten away with a stab, but simply wouldn't be safe enough to use your revolver. I mean, let's just take a look at this basic scenario. Let's say that this sniper right here is really giving your team problems. He's going to be your main target. But he's also being watched by that level 3 sentry right there. Well, if you had any other secondary, you could just stab him and escape before the sentry's able to kill you. But if he has the Razorback equipped, well, then you can't stab him. Nor can you shoot him without alerting the sentry. So the simple act of the Razorback existing forces the spy to completely change what he can and can't do. He's now either forced to ignore the sniper entirely for the time being, or he's forced to destroy the sentry first, which again is oftentimes easier said than done. Not just that, but the actual act of sapping the sentry or killing the engineer is going to alert that sniper of your existence, so he's gonna know. And this wasn't meant to be a perfect example, but the closer that sniper is to his teammates, and the more competent those teammates are, simply just shooting him becomes not so simple. And I'll take a moment to remind you again that the sniper doesn't actually have to do anything here, but open up his loadout and equip this stupid shield. And I think regardless of how any of us feel about sniper's overall balance, we can all recognize that a really good sniper can be an absolutely massive threat and very centralizing to how a match is played. A really good sniper can shut down entire areas from long range, with relatively limited counterplay outside of other snipers. So of all the classes to get a class counter counterer, the sniper should be the last one. As far as I'm concerned, no class should have a weapon like that, but a sniper definitely shouldn't just based on how the class inherently is designed. You know, where he's generally outside of the active fight. And what makes sniper so special here anyway? If something like the Razorback is fair game, why can't Heavy and Engineer have it too? Spy tends to do well against those classes. Hey, why not go even further? Give it to every class. Nobody likes being backstabbed. Except no, that would be terrible. Don't do that. But you see what I'm saying, though? I think a lot of us just accept the Razorback as it is, simply because it's existed for a really long time. I've played TF2 since 2010, and it was already in the game before I started playing. If it didn't exist and was added today, I think we'd all be in a pretty unanimous consensus that it's a very stupid idea. And I do know that there are plenty of other people who feel the same about the Razorback as I do, but a lot of people just probably accept it as part of the game. And if you don't play a lot of Spy, it's probably not something you think about. And I don't blame you for that, because it doesn't affect you. I have a similar dislike for the current state of the Darwin's Danger Shield, existing only as an anti-pyro weapon. And let's be real, it's mainly just an anti-flare weapon. So it exists almost exclusively to counter half of the secondaries of one single class. Maybe not even that. I mean, we basically know that snipers only equip the Danger Shield if they're being harassed by the Scorch Shot. And yeah, the Scorch Shot is annoying and has plenty of its own problems, but you don't even that out by giving Sniper one weapon dedicated just to countering it. That's stupid. Now, I really don't want to give a lot of praise to the previous version of the Danger Shield. 
because it was definitely overpowered and essentially required you to equip it if you didn't want enemy snipers to be at a major advantage against you. But you know what? At least it didn't serve only one role. It was a perfectly good weapon whether or not the enemy team even had a sniper. That said, it did obviously need to be changed. But I do think there was always more to work with with the Danger Shield than there was with the Razorback. The Danger Shield started out as just offering plus 25 health and that was it. The whole Crocus style set that it's part of is seemingly designed for a more frontline offensive type of sniper. And whether or not you even want to keep that health bonus, you could definitely work with that general offensive sniper concept. It shouldn't exist just to screw over one class, because I don't think that's ever a good idea on any weapon. Luckily, there's still only a few weapons like that in the game. And somewhat ironically, Spy has one of his own in the Spicicle. And while I'm really not a fan of the Spicicle either, it does the whole class counter counter thing way better. When I'm playing Pyro against a Spicicle Spy, I'm not forced to totally change how I interact with that Spy. I can still track him when he has the afterburn immunity, and if I melt his knife, I know that he can't significantly harm my teammate for a period afterwards. Again, I'm not a huge fan of the Spicicle, but I don't hate it, at least not like I hate the Razorback. Like I said earlier, the Razorback fills a role that I don't think ever should have been filled. So how could you really balance that? Well, for starters, I think it needs to do literally anything against non-Spy classes. And if you absolutely have to keep the ability to block a backstab, I think it should be toned down to only reduce backstab damage. Though if it must be kept, I would say either have backstabs against a Razorback always deal a certain percentage of Sniper's health, or have it deal a set damage. Like for example, if a backstab against a Razorback always dealt 90% of Sniper's health, if you had full health it would deal 113, if you had 100 health it would deal 90, and if you had 10 health it would deal 9. You get the idea. It would still be a risk to stab that Sniper, because you'd be shocked and made vulnerable, but at least you would know he would be crippled and have to leave the fight. Alternatively, if it always dealt something like 75 damage, you would be able to backstab kill a Sniper if his health was low enough. And as for the non-spy upsides, there's really only so many you could work into a passive weapon like this that wouldn't overlap with the Cozy Camper or the Danger Shield. My usual go-to for the Razorback tends to be resistance from behind to allow it to kind of work as an escape tool. And I've occasionally seen some people say that because this would allow a Sniper to survive a quick scope headshot from behind, that'd be almost like the old Danger Shield. But in a Sniper vs Sniper duel, those two Snipers will almost always be facing each other. Sure, some resistance could allow the Sniper to survive a quick scope headshot from behind, but what's he gonna do? Instantly do a 180, scope, and then headshot you back? I guess that's technically possible, but it's pretty unlikely and you would have time to react. So I, I just don't really see it being an issue. And what I think could be interesting is if the Razorback would also break after it absorbed a certain amount of resistant damage from behind. That way it would not only make the recharge mechanic more useful, but it would also allow Spy's teammates to create openings for him to safely backstab that sniper. You know, teamwork. And while I don't think this would be perfect, I think something in this vein would be a huge improvement over what we have, and I could live with something like this. But ideally, I would still like to see the blocking of backstabs removed entirely. And if it were to be removed from the Razorback, you could make it do literally anything else you want it to. But I guess if you wanted to stick to the basic concept of an escape tool, we could kind of work with the previous idea. The Razorback being able to break is something very unique to it, so I would like to keep that in in some way. It could provide resistance from behind, and break when it absorbs too much damage, but also provide a temporary speed boost when it does break. Again, playing into the aspect of this being for escaping. And because that's probably not enough to carry a whole weapon, you could also maybe add something like a passive plus 35% health from packs on wearer. So this version of the Razorback would no longer be an anti-spy tool, but one that helps you get out of tricky situations, and when you do get out, you'd be able to heal off that damage more efficiently. I think you get the general idea, and I also think it would actually be pretty decent. But again, these are all just hypothetical ideas. With the Razorback, like I said, if you wanted to rework it, you could basically do anything you want with it. But this is also just from my perspective as someone who has never liked the Razorback. I would be surprised if anybody actually loved the Razorback, but I'm sure there are people who like it. In fact, I know one. My best friend of 12 years happens to be a sniper main. Ugh, ugh, sorry, I just threw up a bit in my mouth saying that. Um, who uh, also happens to like the Razorback. Uh, so let's hear the Razorback side of the story, in the most important court case of the century that I like to call The People vs. The Razorback. All rise for the Honorable Judge Jim. Wait, you're the judge? I thought you'd be the prosecutor. I could be both. Show me the rule that says I can't be both. I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but that can't be legal. And that doesn't seem like a jury of our peers. This is Kangaroo Court. Your Honor, I would like everything this man just said stricken from the record. Agreed. Sir, please state your name and class main for the new record. <sighs> My name is Squibjib, and I'm main sniper. Now, Mr. Squib, is it? What is your secondary of choice for sniper? That would be the Razorback. <laughs> no further questions. I rest my case, Your Honor. Give this man the chair. 
What? Huh? No, 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 hold on. The Razorback and I were promised a fair trial. That was never part of the deal. But fine, go ahead, make your case for the indefensible. Look, man, I just think it's a useful weapon. Whether or not the Razorback is useful is not what's on trial here. Tell me, in your own words, whether or not you think the Razorback is a well-designed weapon. And need I remind you that you are under oath, sir? Well, I wholeheartedly and firmly believe it's a fundamentally well-thought-out concept and one that's flawlessly executed. It allows me to trade defensive weapons in exchange for one, one possibly rechargeable safety net. But, here's the thing, the net has holes in it, naturally of course, it's not foolproof. I could still get shot, and I often am, but then the spy is left vulnerable if I have competent team members. Still, nothing about this isn't an equal exchange. I'd even venture to say it's actually perfectly balanced. Well there you have it folks, an attempted defense of the Razorback by a degenerate Razorback user. Wait, hold on. Didn't you just start the video by telling people not to bully others for the weapon choice? Cut his mic! Cut his mic! Okay, well that 30 second defense versus my 15 minute takedown of the Razorback seems pretty even. I think that's pretty fair. It was an okay defense, I guess, but the Razorback is still the Razorback. I could name any number of weapons in TF2, versions both past and present, that have had an overall larger negative impact on the game than the Razorback has. But that said, the Razorback is still uniquely dumb. And it raises the basic question of, should any class have a weapon designed just to counter its counters? Or even just, should any class have a weapon that's designed only to affect one other class? Weapons like that inevitably end up being very limited in their use, and tend to both be not fun to use or to fight against. Like, nobody thinks the Razorback is fun to use. Because as I said multiple times, you don't actually use it. It doesn't fundamentally change anything about how Sniper plays. And there are weapons in TF2 like the Plagistinator, or like the Natasha, where I think they would be better off being reworked almost entirely, because I think the basic ideas behind them are either boring, or bad, or just flawed. But if I was only allowed to rework one weapon in the game, I, I think I would have to go with the Razorback. On principle. Like I said, I don't main spy. In fact, I would say he's definitely my worst class. So more often than not, the Razorback doesn't affect how I personally play TF2. But I have some class solidarity with my spy brethren. The Razorback is a conceptually flawed, boring item, and I think it's one of the dumbest weapons ever put into TF2. So what do you think of it? Did Squib make any good points in his drunken incoherent ramblings? Or did my elegant and convincing speech uh, persuade you of how stupid the Razorback is? Or maybe you just don't really care because you don't play Spy. But either way, thanks for watching, and a special thanks to my patrons like Varric, Captain Forex, Egox, Dex, Probably Vinegar, Caponicus, Kelso the Pirate, Pillsman's Fox, Kyber96, Scout with a Name, Glump, Salt God, Lavi, Tope, Time Consuming, Steel Frog, Nolan46, and Slemmy. Alright, okay. Peace out, dogs. Yeah.